I am Jeremy. I have a YouTube channel called Electric Supercar. On my channel, I build, drive, and race electric cars. So I'm just finishing up my first build and about to start my second one. I use, uh, I'll call them salvage parts. So parts from uh, wrecked cars, like a wrecked Tesla, I'll take the drive unit. Um, I took batteries from a Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivan. Um, so again, uh, just building my own electric cars. Thank you for joining our channel. My name is Michael Podolsky. I am Chief Executive Officer of Fifth Consumer. How did you come about to do that? Are you electrical engineer, electrical mechanic? Why did no. you start doing it? No, I, I just like cars. Um, I, uh, I was always on the lookout to build a car and I, I looked at a lot of kit cars, things like that. And uh, for me, it was it was really uh, just looking at the the drivetrain. So you could build these fancy looking kit cars, but uh, the power plant was like a Honda Accord or a Subaru uh, engine. And again, th those are fine. They're just not kind of high end. And so um, I stumbled across doing the similar thing with an electric motors, with a Tesla motor. And I just thought, man, that's that's for me. That's what it's all about. Why are electric cars so interesting today? Well, I think it's uh, a large part due to, uh, I'll call it the no emissions. I think that's kind of really um, catching on. I think a lot of consumers are trying to figure out how to reduce their carbon footprints, uh, how to be a little more environmentally friendly. For me, I, I really like the uh, instant torque. Uh, I, I think that's just uh, something you can't get with the internal combustion engine. And so I think there's a lot of, uh, lot of things. I think people see it as the way of the future. So I think, uh, again, if you watch like the last Super Bowl, I think there's like eight different ads for electric vehicles um, from lots of the major brands. So I, I think the market's really tending to go that way. What is your favorite electric vehicle uh, today? It's like the, the Remac Nevera. That's like, you know, supercar, hypercar sort of thing. So I don't know if that one really counts. Um, I, I really like uh, the Rivian, you know, for a truck. I think that's that's really cool. Electric cars, consumers like lower carbon footprint. Is it really lower? That's a great question. Um, there's also, uh, I'll, I'll say, even how you manufacture the car. So meaning it takes a lot more uh, carbon emissions to make an electric vehicle, um, particularly the batteries. And so there's, there's questions about, well, how green are the electric cars? And um, if you kind of offset, you know, so after an electric car is made and then after an internal combustion car is made, if you kind of then go forward and say, okay, at what point, if, if you start off with the electric vehicle being a little less green, how, how long do you have to drive it or own it before it kind of breaks even or even is, is a lot better than internal combustion engine? And so um, I, I've looked at some data and it's around uh, about 30,000 miles is where you'd break even. Um, and that's just because it the uh, energy that goes into the car is it's still it's it's still emitting CO2 emissions just making the energy depending on the, how you source your energy, but compared to the internal combustion engine, um, it, it that's kind of your crossover point where you start actually ha having a much greener vehicle. So as long as you plan to drive it for uh, 30,000 miles or about two years, uh, that's that's better for the environment. If someone is interested to purchase an electric vehicle what they should be aware of, what's your recommendations? Yeah, so I think if somebody's thinking about uh, purchasing an electric vehicle, I would say it's not a lot different than purchasing a gas-powered vehicle. So, I mean, you're still, primary concerns are going to be things like, you know, how many seats, um, if it's all-wheel drive, cargo space, cup holders. Um, the only thing different is, I'll, I'll say, the range, so meaning how far you can go before you need to fill up. So that's kind of probably the biggest thing that you would need to kind of look at. Um, as you mentioned, there's also, uh, do you want to fill up uh, or charge at home or do you want to charge at work or public chargers? Um, so there's lots of different places to do that. Um, I think it's pretty convenient to do at home. But uh, yeah, those are some things to consider when uh, looking to purchase an electric vehicle. Are there disadvantages of electric vehicles that you can speak about? And the number one thing for our consumers, I would call it the fear of range. So I think for uh, internal combustion cars, people just get in their car and go. And if, if it's like, oh my gosh, I'm empty, there's gas corners on every, you know, every street corner. 
So I think there's a big concern for consumers like, oh my gosh, you know, I've, I've got a hundred miles left where, you know, how far can I go or where do I need to fill up and how long is that going to take? So I think the fear of range, the time it takes to kind of charge or fill up, I would say other things that are I'll call them disadvantages. I would say some of the purists feel like you're missing out on the driving experience. You know, there's no noise, no shifting. I would also say there's a higher initial cost. So if you wanted to get a very comparable uh, gas powered vehicle, they're typically a little less expensive. What is typical battery life on an electrical vehicle? So we are still, I'll call it in the early stages of uh, the data, meaning Tesla is probably the oldest company that's been out there. And uh, the very first time they met, they uh, put out the Model S was, I think, in 2012. So it's only about 10 years of data, and that's just Tesla. So some of the other brands are a little bit newer. But uh, there's reports that say the, the capacity retention of the Tesla batteries are still around 90%, even after 200,000 miles of usage. So there's, uh, there's quite a bit of range left, quite a bit of life left um, in the electric vehicles. And 200,000 miles, that's, that's a lot of miles for any car. Are you interested to talk about any particular brands, Teslas, or you prefer not to mention cars by brand? I haven't done like test drives and things to tell you, hey, this is a good car, this isn't not. What I would say is if you're considering buying an electric car, um, consider the brand. Um, when I say that, think about the, the companies that invest in electric vehicles. So you think about a company like Tesla, they didn't just make an electric car and say, here you go. They said, wait, people, one of their biggest challenges is charging and this, this fear of range. And you know what? We're going to outfit the entire United States with all these superchargers to make it easier to really have the consumers be more at ease um, in buying and using their electric vehicles. So a company like that is going to be kind of behind and really support um, electric vehicles. A company like Rivian, again, that all they make is electric vehicles. Um, I'm not saying that any of the other companies uh, are not like that, but just remember that they're they're diverse and they're, they're serving uh, other customers as well as the electric customers. What are the typical complaints you hear from electrical vehicle owners? I think one of the biggest ones is probably, I'll call it charge time. So again, coming from a gas powered vehicle, um, I'm going to go fill up my tank from empty to full in five minutes. It's good. Um, electric vehicle, it, it can take an hour or hours. Um, and so it's just, I'll call it a different mindset. It, you kind of have to think about it like, uh, obviously charging your phone, you know, so if you just plug your phone in at night, it's going to be pretty much good all for the next day. Um, but people really in the past have not thought about, uh, putting gas in their car, you know, all during the night, they, they think of, okay, when it's empty, I'm going to go to the gas station. So I think that's probably one of the biggest complaints is, is the charge time. As far as use and maintenance, uh, any complaints there? I would kind of say the other way around. So maintenance is amazing. So there is like no oil changes. Um, you know, there's, there's no transmission fluid. There's again, so maintenance is way easier um, for an electric vehicle. Uh, studies say you save about a thousand dollars a year just in maintenance costs uh, for an electric vehicle over a gas powered vehicle. So maintenance is really good. Um, what was the other part of the question? What's your opinion on the industry as a whole? United States built what we've had five major brands, major companies that were producing gas powered cars. Uh, what's your view on EVs? Are we going to have also five big players in the future? Are we going to have smaller manufacturers of electric vehicles? How do you think it's going to look? The future of electric vehicles, I think it's, it's really swinging hard that way. So I think the governments of the world were all about, you know, trying to reduce emissions, saying kind of setting limits for um, miles per gallon, you know, how efficient the big vehicles need to be. And so a lot of the car manufacturers were really struggling to say, oh, how can we make our gas powered engines um, so fuel efficient and yet still meet the demands of the customer? Um, you know, because a lot of customers want, you know, like an SUV or they want uh, a car that goes fast. And those are really challenging for, you know, low emissions and high mileage sorts of situations. So, uh, yeah, as, as I mentioned before, man, the Super Bowl had all these ads from all major companies saying, hey, we're, we're going electric. Um, and so I think all of all the companies are, I think, uh, striving to catch up. I think Tesla was kind of leading the way. 
now everybody's coming out with uh, electric vehicles, you know, Kia, Mercedes, you know, their BMW, they're all have their offerings. To my very basic understanding, electrical vehicle is actually easy, much easier to build than a mechanical car. Is my understanding yeah. correct? Well, uh, there are different challenges. I, I, I think I would say potentially easier. Um, so with a gas powered vehicle, you, there's just a lot of extra systems, right? So electrical, electric vehicle, you've got an electric system and it just, you know, you've got wires going to a motor and it, and it just runs. Um, for gas powered, you still got that electrical, you got wires going to your motor, but you've got a fuel system, you've got an oil system, you've got an exhaust system, you've got, you know, water pumps. Food system. Yep. And uh, you, you've got uh, transmission and clutch and, you know, so there's, a lot of different systems that are all working in harmony for gas powered vehicles. So again, lots of extra things that can go wrong and a lot of things. So if you're building a car, um, yeah, you're just balancing a lot of different things. So when you say easier electric, uh, I think it's, I would say it's, it's kind of more straightforward, but at the same time um, it's, it's challenging. Meaning like if, if your computer's not working, it's, it takes a, a specialist to kind of know how to get your computer working. Right. Um, if, if you're, if some pump isn't working, you know, if an electric or sorry, in a gas powered car, if a pump or some other gear isn't working, it's pretty easy to kind of take it apart and say, okay, this is what the problem is. Electrical, it's, it's a little more uh, like code and uh, can network systems, you know, a lot of electrons talking to each other. And if, if that's not working, that's a lot more challenging to get working. In the future, say five years from now, production will be able to produce enough cars to cover demand, prices for electrical vehicles will start dropping. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at, say, like the computer or microchip industry, um, if you're starting to design a new computer, you don't design a computer with components you have today. You design it with the components that are going to be available in nine months or a year. And so if, if uh, there's a hard drive or some processor, you don't design for what's available now. You design for what's going to be available in 12 months. And so I think uh, electric cars are the same way where I think battery technology, um, lots of those sorts of things are, are going to really progress rapidly. And so I think those who are designing cars now, they're not designing for the batteries that exist now. They're, they're going to design for the batteries that exist, you know, a year or several years from now. So I think that uh, is really going to expedite the development of electric vehicles. Anything that you would suggest to consumers? Well, I would just say if anybody's hesitant to kind of buy one, I would just say drive one, um, rent one for a week, uh, see what you think. It is quite a different experience. Um, I think it's great. I mean, they handle really well in the snow, um, especially if you kind of got the dual motors. Um, so yeah, I, I think if you're hesitant, just just try it. I think one of the great things is uh, not going to a gas station. You don't realize, you know, that uh, gas stations aren't awesome until you don't go to them for like, uh, a year and then when you go back it's like oh my gosh i used to do this all the time so you know standing out in the cold smelling all those fumes it's like yeah i just go home and plug in and wake up with full tank so i think there's there's lots of good advantages again uh better for the environment uh more uh less pollutants things like that uh so i, I would just say try it it's not for everybody but uh, that's a good way to see if it's for you mm -hmm.